today's tutorial, we're going to talk about how we can utilize Google Forms to create a digital breakout. Let's first take a moment to look at the Growth Mindset Digital Breakout on the back side with how I created it that you completed earlier this semester. My first section deals with an introduction with an introduction video in order to get you fired up and motivated to complete the tasks. I then have mine separated into sections, so you have to do one lock at a time before you can move to the next lock. There are some examples where you can utilize an entire screen for all of your locks all on one screen, and that's okay, just personal preference. You'll notice that within each section, I not only have the lock itself, lock one, lock two, etc., but I give hints such as, your answer needs to be in all capitals. I also indicate that I want you to be able to go with each lock into a separate location in order to find the clue for that lock. Now some of the digital breakouts have everything all on one page and you have to identify which one might pertain to each individual lock. It is completely your choice with how you'd like to create your digital breakout. Now when I go into each lock on the back side here, notice that I have a little particular piece that the text needs to contain the word growth. And then I have this piece here that says try again. When we get to the end of you had figured out each piece of our lock, my final section said congratulations you broke out. So let's look at how we might create this exact same type of digital breakout. I've opened up a, a Google form and we're going to title this test for digital breakout. In the description, here you might want to insert some directions. You can add a picture, you can add a video, or you could start adding your questions right here. I didn't want any questions on my first piece because this might be my intro page. So we might say this will be your introduction page. You might want to now add a section. So when uh, learners are done with one particular section, they can click to go to the next one. So here might be our lock one. And we might want to say that the lock is in digits. So we will ask a question, and we want to change the type of the question into a short answer. So we might say lock one, and this is where your learners will put their text. We want to make sure that this is required so they can't move to the next section until they answer the lock one. We also want to click these three dots here because it will show a response validation. This is so that the Google Forms will check before they move on. So let's try that this will be a number lock. You can choose all types of values that it might be. In this particular case, we want it to be equal to. You can say greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, not between, in between, is a number or a whole number. So you have a lot of different varieties for how you might do this. In this particular instance, we want our number to be exactly one, two, three, four. But what if the learner gets this, uh, the lock combination incorrect, you might want to say incorrect, try again, or keep going, or some such derivative thereof to indicate that they need to try again, but yet keep it positive. Let's say I want to add in another lock, but I want it in a new section. With each one of these questions, you're able to insert a title and description, images, a video, or how I got the um, the website by simply copying and pasting the website right in and saying that put the puzzle together find your next clue copy and paste into a new tab whatever this might be this time let's say our lock two and our question again changing our question to a short answer this time we want all capital letters as our hint and this is our lock two. Again, we want to make it um, required, response validation. This time, instead of a number, I'm going to choose text. 
And when we choose text, we have an option of it has to contain, it doesn't contain, an email address, or a URL. I would stick with contains. It has to contain, let's say it has to contain the word smile. And you could choose all capital letters, you could choose all lowercase letters, it will just whatever you decide make sure it matches and again you can put um, an error message keep going you're nearly there all right when you've come to the end then you can add oops we don't want to add a question I want to delete this question we can add one final section and say let's say that the two locks are the only ones that you have we can say congratulations you broke out. And then you can add a picture, a feel-good picture, a feel-good video, whatever it might be to wrap it up. You also might want to think about adding a learner's name to this so that once they've submitted it, you know who has completed it. And that's as simple as, let's say if I'm back up here, Let's say I add a question, a short answer. We can say name, and we'll also put that it's required. Note this time I'm not going to put the response validation because I just want the learner, doesn't matter what they put, um, we just want it to be listed there. Now that you have your digital breakout created with your locks and how you want it to look, you can now change the look and feel of it. You might want to uh, label by clicking up in the top left hand corner. You might want to consider changing the theme colors. You can add an image header using a variety of different um, fun things here. Even using your photos from your own library. You can change the theme color. You can even change the font style to something fun. So let's say we change it to formal. Let's say we change our colors to blue. And let's see if we can find a fun background. And there we go. So we've dressed it up a little bit, have fun with that portion, but now I want to send this. Okay. We may want to consider some settings. Um, you can have a students by, you could have students submit this by collecting email addresses and limiting one sign in uh, or limit their sign into one response per person. I'm going to choose to leave these empty so that anybody can utilize it, whomever has it. You can change it to a presentation. And you can also make this a quiz by offering grade points if you'd so choose. But now I'm ready to send this for learners to practice and utilize. I'm going to send this, and there's a variety of different ways that you can send this. You can email it, you can have a link, and perhaps shorten your URL so it's easier to, uh, to read. Or you may also embed this form within perhaps your your classroom website, or perhaps you want to embed it within your learning management system, for example, Blackboard or Schoology or uh, Google Classroom, those kinds of things. So there's a variety of different ways. Um, I'm going to share mine as a link, and we can copy and paste this link anywhere that you so choose.